Lucas Mangope deserve an official provincial funeral? Did the apartheid regime achieve its intentions out of the Bantu stands? And did the appointment of traditional leaders as Bantu stand administrators diminish the value of traditional leadership? And why did the IFP regard the federal system as a viable option for a new South Africa? What time is it? It's question time. Hoto Ngurula Mraro and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Sedu, the former leader of the SWAL, Buputatswana Homeland Chief Lucas Mangope, will be laid to rest at his home village of Mutsuedi in the northwest tomorrow. A teacher and tribal leader, Khus Mangope, took the reins on 6 December 1977 when independence was granted by apartheid South Africa Prime Minister John Forster. Buputatswana was one of the four so called Bantu stands, including Transkai, Venda, and uh, Siskai, the multi-party talks that paved the way to a democratic dispensation, became a challenge to those who found it difficult to embrace the winds of change. The late Chief Mangope is known for having refused to participate in the first democratic elections of 1994. After trying all they could, the South African government delegated Foreign Minister Peck Water, accompanied by other, if other fellow um, members of the committee, the transitional committee at the time, including Mac Maharaj and Ruth Mayer, who eventually informed him that he was out of power early in March 1994. Popular uprisings then followed and marked the end of a 17-year-old Buputatswana. We are live, and uh, therefore you can call us and air your views. The numbers to dial is 89 if you're outside the borders, plus 2789-110-4210. Or tweet us, our Twitter handle at question time 24. And a reminder that you can also live stream us on our Facebook page, SABC News Online and our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash SABC Digital News. My guest today, Popum Lefe, he's the former Northwest Premier and joining us from our studio in Deb and Prince Mangosu Tubtelezi, who is also uh, the current leader of the Inkata Freedom Party. Uh, but before we go into our uh, show, um, let's take a look at uh, this clip. Control. They looted control. There was a lot of criminal looting in, Mab in Mabat. And the South African government looted political power. Not permit the recommendations here to be recognized as having the effect of formal binding legislation. Resulting from this change, the determinations made here must be subject to referenda before they are legally effective. Well, those are two um, uh, late leaders now, Dr. Uh, Frank Mzalose there uh, from the IFP, making a point at uh, Codesa and earlier on, of course, uh, Remang Ope himself um, expressing his views about what he thought uh, had happened in um, uh, 1994. Remang Ope, welcome to the show. Good evening, Paul. All righty. Sheng, Sawamgela, now we're feeling ready to go question time. Yeah, yeah, well, no, Mr. Sergi, thank you. Yes. Uh, perhaps let me just start with uh, Bob Telezi, um, uh, uh, Mr. Mlefe. Um Bob Telezi, um, you know, the, the, there was a, a plethora of uh, feelings expressed by, you know, South Africans. How do you remember uh, Remangope? Some say this is, was a dictator who maimed political activists and all that. Some are saying, but this was our leader who developed our communities and also our uh, traditional leader on the other end. Who is and was um, Lucas Mangope to uh, Uba Telis? Well, the people of course who complied with the homelands policy when in fact it was made actually clear to us that it was compulsory. And in fact, I, as a member of the ANC, was actually against it, just my party, as my organization was against it. But in fact, 
I was instructed by my leader, Nkos Albert Lutuli, and my leader, Oliver Tambo, to comply because they said that I should participate in it so that, in fact, we should ensure that this thing doesn't get to the destination to which the apartheid regime wanted it to go. So I, I, I would imagine that, yeah, indeed, you, you uh, represent, you know, a different um, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, type of um, leaders of um, the Bantu Sten administration because you denied, or rather you refused, uh, Guazulu Natal uh, to be independent uh, the way, uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, Buputatswana, Venda, Transkai, and Siskai. What informed that decision? In fact, I've already answered the question. I said that I was instructed by my leader, in course Albert Lutuli, and my leader Oliver Tambo, to comply and not to refuse when other Amakosi elected me to lead them within the homeland's policy. Because they said in that way they were sure that I would lead it in such a way that it doesn't achieve what the apartheid regime wanted it to achieve, which was to dismember our country into, into the so-called uh, independent states. So in fact, our, we prevented the portion I was governing from becoming a Bantustan. We, we refused to become a Bantustan. We rejected it. OK. Um, you, you, you became a leader of the Northwest province at a time when uh, Ramangope had, had just been the president of uh, you know, that particular uh, region. And you were leader of the uh, ANC. Um, he was leader of the opposition in the legislature, if I, I recall well, at some point. How did you uh, two work? Paul, I think the starting point for me is to convey our sincere condolences to the family, friends, and relatives of uh, Kosi Lucas Mangopa. I think it's appropriate that we do so, uh, even before we start talking about it. Yes, it is true, I, I took over as Premier in the new government. Um, uh, with Jose Mangope leading the opposition party called the, the Christian uh, uh, Democratic Party, oh. United Christian Democratic Party, uh, of, well, it was, it had changed from being a Buputatswana party to a party that had become national in oh. the new South Africa. Um, of course, as you should know, it followed Many months of attempt to persuade Kosi uh, Mangope uh, to participate in the then uh, unfolding uh, Kodesa uh, negotiations. Yes. Um, he was in the opposition when the new government uh, took place. I expected him to play the role of the opposition. He oh, yes. was opposed to the ANC, opposed to the government. Oh. Uh, on occasion, he would be very vicious in his opposition to the government, but there was nothing surprising about it. Uh, men believed in something else that we did not believe in. Oh. But the most important thing is that uh, in the final analysis, he had to accept that change had come, had come. Mm -hmm. the process of rebuilding the country in a different manner, uh, which recognized the diversity of cultures and languages of our people, uh, had to proceed. And then he participated. It was important uh, for us to be able to, to get him participating in a legislature that initially uh, he did not imagine himself being part of. Yeah, and, and how, how how were your interactions uh, with him? Um, because I mean, history records that you were even part of, uh, or rather, um, some among the people whom uh, the late President Mandela had also, you know, um, spoken to to say, "Hey, go and talk to this uh, man." Yeah, Paul, you know. Uh, we, 
we set out to, to build a broad base, united front of all the black people, regardless of whether they had been in the homelands or independent uh, Bantustans, of course they call themselves national states. It was important at that critical time, as we began uh, on the trajectory of moving towards the new South Africans envisioned in the Freedom yeah. Charter and the values that we have now included in the new constitution to bring on board everybody who had accepted the architects of apartheid. I mean, uh, yeah. we were talking to Mr. de Klerk, uh, Kobe Kutsie, Pak Burta, all of them, Magnus Malang. So we had to equally talk to our black people who had been part of that system. But we, we didn't need to talk to them in an adversarial manner that would push them deeper into the hands of the erstwhile ally of them uh, in the apartheid state. We wanted them to be on our side, to say, we're all blacks now. We might have done things differently in the past, but we have now the opportunity uh, in a united fashion to work together towards a South Africa envisioned by our people where collectively we can begin to build a better life for all South Africans. Lahasamolo. Ayati. Awar sababaleju. Let me go straight to the point. Mpo. Hey. And let him let him be given the provincial general. Even though uh, I, I I don't know him very well, I just you to you to hear about him during the old time during apartheid time. But what I can say that let, let that not punish him. Let him be given the um, the provincial general. Okay. Bob, tell us one thing that I've always wondered, and uh, I have the privilege to can ask you now, is were there ever talks amongst yourselves as um, homeland uh, state leaders uh, leading to that transitional period where changes were beginning to be uh, felt um, you know, throughout uh, South Africa to say, how do we approach uh, this new uh, democratic uh, uh, dispensation facing us? Yes, I wish that you had more time. Because in 1973, we met at Um, in um Tata, because I suggested that we should meet not as ethnic leaders, but as black leaders at that time, so that what we said should be said you know, by us you know, in a collegial way as black leaders representing black people. So at that meeting, in fact, all of us, including those who, um, who, who had been working because they accepted the concept, which I didn't accept myself, of, of, of uh, balkanizing the country. Uh, you know, we, we all met together and agreed at that time that South Africa should be a federation of states. In fact, in other words, trying to move away from the idea of dismembering the country. And at one time then we decided that we should see the leader of the apartheid regime not separately. We should refuse to see them I, as leader of KwaZulu, of Zulus, Hosman Ope, as leader of uh, Muputatswana, but as, as, as people representing black people. So, in fact, we were granted that audience by Mr. Foster, where we participated uh, in, the, in that conversation. And it was very interesting that my ideas and those of Hosman Ope were alike in many ways. To the extent that I was quite surprised when Hosman Ope told me during the tea break that both Nkosi Matanzima and Dr. Sebe had said to him, you and Mutelezi 
forget these people are our masters in the way you talk to them. In other words, that you, what, what you're not speaking uh, as, as underlings, of, but we're speaking to other men as equals to other men. And, and they were saying that we should not do so. And I remember at one time when I was speaking that actually, Dr. Sebe actually said in, in, in Singuni, you know, trying to hint to me that I was going too far and that I must stop speaking in, the, in that vein. Okay. And um, then my disappointment only came because... Yes, go ahead. Because, yeah, because Jose Mangop used to say to me, you know, I don't trust, I don't trust uh, KD, which was actually the abbreviations of Nkosi Matanzima. All the time he said so. And in fact, both of us agreed that we would never, ever take the so-called independence. And, uh, and I was in Canada at the time when I heard over the radio that he had accepted, you know, uh, independence from Putetswana. I was, I was very disappointed indeed because I respected him. You know, this man was educated actually at St. Peter's uh, College. College. He was a student of Oliver Tambo, one of our leaders. And in fact, when we went to London together in 71 with Hosman Ope and Kosma Tanzima, you know, we were invited there by the government. In fact, there was great excitement when Mr. Tambo met with Mr. With the host Mangope because he was a student. So that's where he came from originally. And I was therefore very sad when at the end of it all he, he, he decided to follow the same footsteps of Nkos Matanzima, whom he called KD, and accepted independence after he had many times said to me he didn't trust Nkos Matanzima because he thinks that he's going to accept independence. Okay, hold it. Matsiri, so you are in Rodiport. Welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 Mahmoud was a very intelligent person. Mm. This advantage of Mahmoudi. On our side, on our man cut a last. If you, whether man cut a last, if you talk, mm. if you want to stop to listen. Indeed, a integral community. He doesn't listen to you. He doesn't, he does not listen to the community. Mangope didn't listen to them. Anyway, he didn't get any advice from anybody. How about what Mulela or Mangope did us all? Mangope on a Mangana. How Mangope a Kamanse Mangana? Mangope was a tough leader. How can Mangope an air outside the advice of a Mangope? We are on a Kahoo. And again, I want to talk about Mulela. So how come how how can we develop Mentenya to where the kind of West? Because to teach you that the repopulation. The tangible thing that we are going to do is to create the practical one. The the remuneration is really. The reflection. In the sense that we are going to have a It is only one step. The electricity. Other than electricity, nothing has. Agency done for the people of Northwest up until to, since 1994 up until today. I can challenge him. I want to ask him to go to Northwest. Electricity. Say to me, so it's so hard. How can I go to Northwest? The West province, the Northwest. The West province, the The West province, the drought. When I'm not going to drought, I can keep out. I'm from Kunana village. In Kunana village, but about Kunana, they've got no water since the 2016. Okay. So today, I want to make He doesn't care about us. The only thing he knows is what he has I want to say that he has 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 to say that he Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ramatiri. So they're calling us from Rodi Port. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, I'll give uh, Mr. Mlefe an opportunity to respond. This is question time.
If you ask this pretentious mixologist what is needed to make the ultimate cocktail, she'd say, a thorough knowledge of science. Ooh, right in the face. Hmm, yes. If you asked us, we'd say it's less about science and more about, well, chemistry. Get a 750 ml bottle of Amarula for only 104.99 from Tops at Spa. Welcome back. We're still watching Question Time. Our guest today, Repo Pumlefe, the former Premier of Northwest Province, and from our Devon Studios, Prince Mangosutu Ptelezi, the leader of the IFP. The... Ramlefe, what kind of a region did you inherit? And basically, what, uh, what I'm saying is, what kind of a Putatuana did you inherit as the Northwest Province? Mpo, uh, we inherited a province that was deeply divided. Yeah. A province uh, that was characterized by one on one side conservatism of the Africaners and who were rabid racists at the time. Oh. And also a splinter of uh, Botswana oh. who were very suspicious of uh, the notion of a, a new South Africa. They believed that uh, they had begun to build something for themselves as an ethnic mm. nation because that's what they were. Uh, what they were promoting at the time was ethno-nationalism, not nationalism uh, mm. of South, South Africanism. Yes. Um, it was very poor. Uh, in large parts of the province, there were no developments. But I must say that Kosi uh, Malung uh, Mangope in parts of that uh, region had built infrastructure, some state of the art infrastructure. Even though that infrastructure really was more benefiting uh, the elite more mm. than the ordinary people. Mm. Uh, that is the nature of the business. But there was a foundation for us. There was a foundation for us to move forward mm. uh, in building a, a new province, but it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had to navigate our way very carefully against uh, black conservatism as well as white conservatism. Okay. Bob Telezi, let me just uh, give you um, perhaps final or uh, closing remarks. Um, how do you think South Africans need to remember a person like um, uh, Ray Mangope? Let me first of all follow the footsteps of uh, Mr. Mulef and express my, my deepest sympathies to the family of Jose Mangope and to the people, the Khurusa people, and, and to all the friends and the people that he served. And I agree totally with Mr. Mulefe that although ideologically we disagreed with him in accepting the concept of frag fragmenting our country into one stance, but nevertheless, he's, he has just said, he left, he's still remembered for the state of the art infrastructure that he left for our people. I mean, that we cannot deny him that, even if it was for wrong reasons, but we must give him credit for that. Okay. Bob Teles, thank you very much. Uh, Remlev, we also thank you for making time. We know it's never enough uh, to talk about you know, the wealth of information that you, the older generation, have uh, in your memories as well. But uh, we really appreciate you making time. Thanks, Bob. Well, that was uh, Question Time, and uh, we really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, let's meet again next week from me and the entire crew. Have yourself a wonderful time, and uh, from the team here and uh, to all, Bahuruzi Bo Manyane, Rore A Moyawaramangope, Urobale Kakahiso.
ביי בחוץ.